So with the Madrid Open done and dusted, one of the biggest tournaments on the ATP WTA clay court calendar, and a little bit of extra rounds to play this year because, of course, it was an extended draw. We had some return champions getting the wins here and also some changes in the rankings, but let's go have a look at who won last week. So only the two events last week, starting with the WTA, of course, at the Madrid Open. That was Sabalenka getting her revenge over Sviantec from losing in Stuttgart. 6-3, 3-6, She wins her second Madrid Open title. And on the men's side, Alcaraz also winning his second Madrid title. 6-4, 3-6, 6-3 against Struff, who was a lucky loser making a final at this stage, which is... A little bit of history. And Alcaraz closes the gap on Djokovic at number one. So some big wins for the world number twos this week. All right, let's have a look at the players outside the top 10 that went up in the rankings this week. Starting with Struff. He is now at a career high number 28 in the world. 37 spots higher than last week after that amazing run in Madrid. Also, Andy Murray. He's gone up 10 spots at number 42 after playing and winning a challenger event this week. So wasn't all the players in Madrid getting a boost. And Sharif. Making to the quarterfinals of this event. She goes up 16 spots to a career high number 43 in the world. So some players have played well in Madrid and also in the challenger events during the second week of Madrid going up in the ranks. Players that went down in the rankings this week. Alexander Zverev, he's gone outside the top 20 now at number 22. Six spots lower than last week after failing to make the final again in Madrid after what happened last year. He actually lost the same guy in Alcaraz this week. So he's dropped down the ranks. Also, Alexandrova, she's gone to number 22 on the WTA rankings, five spots lower than last week. Again, losing points from last year's tournament after having a good run there. And Teichmann, she's gone down 28 spots, number 58 in the world. Again, losing a lot of points from making the Madrid semifinals last year. So some players there that had a really good 2020 to Madrid, unable to keep their rankings high. All right, let's start with the WTA rankings now and a few changes, but no change up the top, which Fiontech staying at one, Sabalenka staying at two, Pagula at three, but Jabur unfortunately unable to play in Madrid after the injury she sustained over in Stuttgart. She drops down three spots, losing a thousand points from last year's title. Down to number seven, allowing Garcia to go up to number four, Goff to number five, and Rabakina goes up to a career high number six. And another little change at the bottom of the rankings with Zachary going up to number eight in the world after making the semi-finals in Madrid, pushing Kazakina down to number nine, and Kvitova still hanging on to that top 10 spot for now. And of course, with Rome coming up next week, a lot of these players have a lot of the points to defend, including Sviantec, of course, the defending champion of Rome. And Jabur also has a final that she has to defend from last year. So we could see some more changes to the top 10 before the French Open starts. Looking at the race of the finals now, and things are starting to take shape. Sabalenka still at number one, though. Almost 5,000 points, which is a ridiculous amount of points at this stage of the season. Rebecca is still at number two with Fiontech at three. Pagula at four. Benchard at five. But a little bit of a change in the middle with Krajikova going up to number six pushing Kvitova down to number seven. Goff stays at eight. And Maria Sakri, she goes up seven spots into the top ten of the race of the finals for the first time this year up to number nine pushing Azarenka down to number ten. And Lynette gets pushed out of the top ten completely. So the top of the race of the finals looks pretty solid but for those players sort of five and below if you have a good week in one of these big tournaments get a lot of points you could really improve your chances. Over to the men's rankings now and not too many changes with Djokovic staying at number one. Five points ahead of Alcaraz at number two so Rome's going to be very interesting. A battle for number one happening over the next couple of weeks. Medvedev stays at number three with Ruda number four just ahead of City Pass at number five. Rublev at six with Runa at seven. Sinners at number eight but Felix Ogelia seem he drops down to number 10 making way for Fritz to go up to number nine. The only change in the top 10 that's because FA lost all his points that he gained last year so so not too many changes there to the top 10 for the men. But of course, there is a big change potentially up the top of the rankings next week ahead of the French Open. Remember, after Rome, the rankings and the seedings for the French Open will be locked. So a lot of these guys are playing for top four. You know, there's a battle between Pass and Rude in the middle there. And of course, that number one ranking and number one seeding at the French Open at stake. Going over to the race of the finals now. And we have a change at the top with Carlos Alcaraz leapfrogging Djokovic and Medvedev to go up to number one in the race of the finals. 100 points ahead of Medvedev. He pushes down to number two. And Djokovic gets pushed down to number three. So those three guys locked up at the top. And a little bit of a change in the middle too with Pass going up one spot, pushing Sinner down to number five. So four and five changed their rankings. Very close behind at number six is Rublev with Fritz at number seven. And some more changes down the bottom with Hashinov going up to number eight after making making it to the quarterfinals of Madrid, pushing Runa down to number nine. Paul comes back into the top 10 after getting to a challenger final last week, pushing Norrie down to number 11 outside the top 10. So a few changes this week on the race of the finals as they were for the ladies. And again, with Rome next week,
streak with a lot of points. It only takes one week to get into this top eight if you have a successful run in Rome next week. So interested to see how this plays out. So there you have it. After a huge two weeks of Madrid, we're finally done. But we're not done yet because we still have two more weeks, huge weeks with a thousand points on the line for the Rome winners. And the race of the finals is starting to heat up as well. Sabalenka on 5,000 points almost already, which is incredible. She's pretty much in the WTA finals at this stage. I think she's well and truly going to be there. But uh, we're going to have a change maybe at the top of the rankings for the men. With Djokovic only five points ahead of Alcaraz. Let me know down in the comments below. What do you think is going to happen in Rome? Do you think we're going to get a change to the rankings at the top of the men's in Rome? Or do you think that we're going to maybe keep Djokovic at number one? He's going to have to defend the title. And I think Alcaraz has to pull out of Rome. That's the only chance he has, maybe, if the math plays out. But some massive changes on the cards over the next couple of weeks ahead of the French Open. And remember, seedings are locked. After Rome, the French Open seedings will be locked.